Dear Hero, On your journey to mastery of your world, you will be sure to encounter the reptilian strategist. Such manipulators persuade others to follow their lead by exciting the victim's primal instincts for survival in order to initiate an adrenal override of higher thought processes like logic or empathy. Arming yourself with a basic understanding of the reptile strategy is a defense tactic that should never be ignored. Therefore, dear hero, I invite you to take from my disquisition a basic understanding of the reptile strategy and some key points to remember when developing countermeasures for it. To begin, dear hero, let us discuss the myth of the triune brain and how the various sections of it think. The triune brain is a metaphor used to describe the form and function of the different areas of the human brain. It is considered incorrect and outdated. However, it is useful for conveying and organizing the information we will be discussing in relation to this psychological manipulation strategy. In the center of the human brain, resembling the reptilian brain, is the R-complex or basal ganglia. This area is responsible for instinct and survival, and it is the area the reptilian strategist exploits in order to elicit a particular behavior. The R-complex instinctive thought process evolved in the fiercely treacherous world of early human survival. Its primary function is to protect the prosperity, spreading, and survival of its genes. It concerns itself with nothing else and lays dormant when there is no prize to acquire, no mate to seduce, or when there is no threat to destroy. It is not emotional. It is opportunistic. It does not respect selflessness, self-destruction, or self-isolation. It does not like mysterious things, coy things, or dangerous things. Flattery will gain you no favor with the reptile. It only accepts tangible rewards like resources, intercourse, or the death of threats. It is only concerned with immediate circumstances. Anything outside of its sphere of influence is irrelevant to it. It is able to override higher thought processes because those thought processes evolved from the R-complex's fulfilled needs. The limbic system and the neocortex could not exist without the R-complex's ability to survive. Therefore, they submit to its authority always. Layered on top of the R-complex is the limbic system, which is also known as the paleomammalian complex. This area is the emotional center of our brain, and it is fundamental to creating the social bonds necessary to create a community. The paleo-mammalian complex is responsible for our need of love and belonging. It evolved to help bond communities together. It can be happy or sad, neutral or mad. It enjoys things, people, and animals and gets attached to them. It connects to and understands others by mirroring their emotions. This mirroring causes emotions to be contagious and results in the limbic system preferring to see others thrive. Altruism and compromise begin in the emotional mind. They are key factors in creating a community that can enforce an environment that is safe enough for the R-complex survival instinct to rest in dormancy. Flattery will gain you favor with the limbic system 
because flattery helps satisfy the need of love and belonging. The final top layer of the human brain is the neomammalian complex, also known as the neocortex. It is responsible for our rationality and logical reasoning. It is this area that the reptilian strategists must override in order to get us to do what they want. When not focused on survival or riding the waves of emotion, the human mind is run by this long-term thinking neo-mammalian complex. It exists because the R complex is effective at neutralizing threats to its legacy. The neocortex has higher order needs than survival or love and belonging. It needs a sense of self-worth and self and self-actualization. It is a luxury of successful survival and is only able to concentrate if emotions are under control and survival needs are met. It worries about others' needs, knowing if they are desperate, it is only a matter of time before they threaten its resources or life and awaken its own reptile complex. Justice is important to the neocortex. It is a complexity that can only be appreciated by the higher order mind. The challenge of overcoming the complex difficulties boosts its self-perception or image. It likes competition. Competition helps it analyze its own abilities in relation to its community, allowing it to discover where it fits best or belongs in the social hierarchy. The neocortex is responsible for our, our self-control. It prevents us from acting instinctively animalistic or emotionally volatile in our everyday life. It does this because it is concerned with its long-term survival and it knows that base order needs and emotional needs cause unnecessary clashes within the community. Contrary to popular belief, various areas of the triune brain are not exclusive to any species in particular. All land species evolve from fish, and gene studies have revealed that different species have different exposures to different durations of cerebral growth and development in each specific area. Fundamentally, it's the same brain that all land species share, and it just develops differently in each separate species. The reptile strategy refers to the legal strategy that influences jurors' decisions by exciting the primal and instinctive R complex of the human brain. Through the use of code words, survival safety rules, and dramatic stories, the strategist frames what the defendant did and the impact on the plaintiff as a direct threat to the individual, the greater community, and the future of our youth. This direct threat initiates a, R, a primal R-complex adrenal override of the neocortex, reducing jurors' thought processes to the paranoid and stressful state of survival instinct. A heroic call to action completes the manipulation by convincing the juror to neutralize the threat through a guilty verdict. It is an effective strategy that attacks a defendant's actions, exposes them as a danger to the community, and aims to establish the defendant's apathy, their not learning from their actions, and the possibility that they are lying. It portrays the defendant as an incompetent menace trying to escape responsibility, while at the same time it portrays the jurors as heroes responsible for getting justice for the plaintiff, reinforcing community safety standards, and demonstrating the responsible role modeling for future generations. In the courtroom, the reptile strategy focuses on threat-based instinct to influence juries. 
In daily life, however, the reptile manipulation can exploit our survival needs for resources and mating as well. Everyday reptile manipulation can look like any of the following. A baby screams bloody murder in order to get fed. This exploits threat-based instinct. A teenager offers money to burrow the car. This exploits resource need instinct. A lover provides intercourse to motivate a sacrifice. This exploits legacy-based instinct. A friend humiliates another to protect one from poor purchase decisions. This exploits resource need instinct. An enemy intimidates you to receive your resources. This exploits the need for safety. A bartender flirts to receive more tips. This exploits legacy-based instinct. An ad is graphic to dissuade drinking and driving. This exploits the need for safety. A game offers a prize to encourage participation. This exploits the need for resources. We dress well for a date to be perceived more favorably. This exploits legacy-based instinct. A trainer offers a dog a treat to behave more favorably. This exploits the dog's need for resources. The reptile manipulation strategy will frame a behavior as the requirements to acquiring a prize, seducing a mate, or as a necessity to eliminate a threat to the survival of the individual, the community, or future generations in order to awaken the R complex from dormancy so it may override higher order reasoning like logic or empathy. The use of code words connect the frame with the manipulated victim's survival instincts. Code words are chosen by their ability to appear neutral, but also have a dramatic impact at the same time. Some examples of code words are reward, meaning resource, hot, meaning sexy or available, or opponent, meaning threat. It is important that the reptile strategist knows their victim or audience when using code words and creates them tailored to the manipulative story they intend to tell. An instinct-based rule is key to the manipulation. Without it, it becomes nearly impossible to attach the story or frame to the survival instinct of the manipulated victim. Instinct-based rules must prevent danger, reward resources, or aid in spreading one's legacy. They must be general enough to apply to a variety of situations. They must be clear, practical, and easy to follow. They must explicitly state what can be or shouldn't be done. They must be one the victim agrees with, or they look stupid, careless, or dishonest for disagreeing with it. Some examples of instinct-based survival rules might be a resource-based rule. One must acquire resources to survive. This is to motivate one to get a job to get money, but is broad enough to acquire to cover acquiring food, tools, and knowledge as well. A legacy-based survival rule. One must take care of themselves to have the option to spread their legacy. This is to motivate one to exercise to be more attractive, but is broad enough to cover staying in optimal health for the reproduction process as well. A threat-based survival rule might be that one must pay attention to their surroundings. This might be in place to make sure one stays alert to potential threats, but is broad enough to be alerted to hiding spots, escape routes, and potential allies as well. To complete the frame, the reptilian strategist may use story to convey the threat, reveal the path to a prize, or describe a seduction strategy to their victim. 
It allows effortless processing of information and improves the listener's ability to remember key information relevant to the manipulation. The reptilian strategist's story will not be about ethics or morality. It's about what the victim must do. It will focus on the instinct-based survival rule. It will use short, clear sentences. It will use supportive tones, implications, or vocal inflections. It will allow victims to discover the rationale for the action themselves. The reptilian strategist story will aim to establish that the threat doesn't care about the victim, they know better, and are behaving recklessly. The resource, it will aim to establish that the resource is essential, widely desired, and easily attained through the instructions given. It will aim to establish that the maiden possibility is high, the mate is interested, and waiting to be whisked away in romance. The story will develop suspicions of the threat's honor, the resource's abundance, or the mate's patience. It will focus on the threat ignoring any risks, the victim's need for the resource, or the compatibility of the victim and the potential mate. The story will portray the threat as irredeemable, the resource as a necessity, or the mate's potential to court someone else. The story will show how further delays increase the threat, decrease the resource, or invalidates and disinterests the mate. It will show how bad the threat can be, how limited the resource is, or how wonderful the partner is. It will look at threat upon threat, gain upon gain, or how maiden leads to greater charisma. It will show how eliminating the threat is essential to the community's safety, how acquiring the resource makes one more valuable to the community, or how maiden with the partner makes one more accepted into the community. Finally, the story will show how any rational mind would make the decision the reptilian strategist is recommending the victim to do. Once the story has successfully framed the victim's behavior as essential to neutralizing a threat, acquiring a reward, or seducing a mate, a heroic call to action is placed upon the victim. Simple and clear, the manipulation exploits the victim's instinct to survive in order to get them to do what the strategist wants them to do. To recognize the reptile strategy, we have learned that the use of code words and instinctual survival rules are necessary and will accompany a story that establishes a behavior as a threat to an, an individual or the community, as an essential essential action to acquiring a resource or as a key seduction tactic. We can recognize that we are being manipulated this way when a call to action is framed as a heroic act that will neutralize these threats, earn the reward, or help seduce a mate. To help counter the manipulative control of the reptile strategy, we should remember the following. Ambiguous words are identified by context and can slow instinctive thought processing to allow higher order assessment. Focusing on happy memories or positive thoughts can slow down the heart and reverse reptile complex adrenal override. Controlled breathing can also slow down the heart and reverse reptile override and help maintain neocortex dominance in stressful situations. Sounds and smells can be used to calm a racing heart and neutralize our complex overrides. Repetition is good for easing uncertainty and creating familiarity, but can lead to contempt or annoyance. Framing the reptile strategists as an absurd exaggeration will be necessary to neutralize the threat the R-complex sees or recognizes. 
higher order needs like reputation or self-image can remind one that a dutiful assessment of the situation is far more preferable than an emotional or instinctive rush to act. Positive moods tend to cause less of an attention span and increase our reliance on heuristics. Therefore, it is necessary to humble oneself when dealing with others to avoid being taken advantage of. Do not be too excited, which leads to naivety, but do not be too pessimistic either because that makes one vulnerable to threat-based manipulations like the reptile legal strategy. Keep a calm demeanor to prevent corrupting your own credibility and aim to bait your reptile strategist opponent into emotional overreaction. Source bias can weaken credibility if the source is perceived as having inaccurate information, poor communication skills, or has clear self-interest at stake. An argument, frame, or piece of evidence may help persuade a decision, but a believable story is required to assure it. The, reptil the reptilian strategy is a persuasion technique that is a combination of both influence and emotional manipulation, while at the same time being neither. Like influence, the reptilian strategy aims to align itself with the benefits of its victim. Like manipulation, the reptilian strategy uses unconscious thought processes to guide the victim towards a particular behavior. Unlike influence, the reptilian strategy aligns itself with basic survival needs instead of higher order ones. Unlike emotional manipulation, the reptilian strategy relies on instinct instead of emotion to guide the victim towards a desired behavior. In closing, dear hero, recognize that the reptilian persuasion technique fundamentally has your own best interest at heart. It may be manipulative, but that does not necessarily mean it is entirely selfishly exploitive. For most, it is a natural way to influence those closest to them, and in many cases, it is the only strategy that people know how to do to persuade others. Be humble, dear hero, for if you made it this far into my disquisition, you are more psychologically prepared than the average person you may encounter. Go forth and recognize our greatest enemy in life is our own ignorance.